Hello again to our third video where we continue exploring the museum. Right now we've visited every single room, so we're going finally to the last one. Now, as you might have seen, uh, the previous room was another room with paintings. Um, this is the part that's, uh, let's say, at the very top of the first room you will find this one and as you can see there are many paintings uh, that you can collect here and donate so let's see each one of these what are they from who is the artist behind this because you might uh, see less familiar paintings considering that most of this were made by people in Latin America so let's see what is the difference here the first one we have here is uh, Kiriwina's fiance. Fiance. This is a Cuban made by a Cuban artist, Wilfredo Lam, and he created this painting in 1949, depicting a uh, wild woman with an animal rump wearing a mask that looks like a horse's face. Now, I actually don't get much of what's represented here, but I guess I can find the human or the woman form, but then it gets um you know uh, hard to discern and the colors also look kind of you know not related to what seems to be going on on the painting so that's a, an odd one and i think that's going to be a trend um with most of the pictures here so this one is made was made in 1915 this time by uh, an argentine Argentinian artist, uh, Xul Solar, and and again, the picture, I don't know, like, most of the pictures that I've noticed uh, from this region uh, tend to be more, well, I mean, this region, and I mean a whole <laughs> extension going all the way from Mexico to Chile or Argentina down at the bottom of Latin America, but, <clears throat> but I don't know, like, it feel like most of these are very expressive, but the technique, it's uh, often, I guess, left out by, you know, technique when it comes to the representation of the bodies. It seems to be more heavily referenced or important to, to show the colors that they want to add. Now, this one does look more traditional, and this was made by Alejandro Alonso Rochi, born in Nicaragua. And well, I mean, I guess this actually does look very similar to the paintings uh, that we were looking at the previous room. This is the injured worker, and this time made by an Argentinian artist, Antonio Berni. And it says, it says here that he was known for his socially engaged figurative painting, rooted in the Marxist viewpoint for interpre interpreting society. So I think I mentioned this before, where people uh, on the previous video, where people paint a painting or artists um, will not only add their technique and emotions, but also their point of view of what's going on with social or society around them. And I think that's a very good example of that. We have here another image, this time by another Nicara uh, artist from Nicaragua. Armando Morales, and this one was made in 1994. We can see some girls arguing, and the colors here are not so vibrant as we've seen or will be seeing on other artists like from Mexico. Um, but I don't know, like it's it's hard for me to add more to these paintings because most of these I've never seen before or heard uh, from them. Uh, let's see here, Toast at the Harbor. This is made by Antonio Lopez Sáenz, born in 1936 in the port of Mazatlán, Mexico, which is also the home of Encena Soft. That's a very important, or you know, a curious note, kind of an Easter egg of having this artist here. This was made in 2002, and uh, it says that this painting captures the spirit of Mazatlán. So, maybe you can see the islands on the back we have some islands that you can see when you're on the boardwalk walking um, throughout the area of the city maybe inspiring most of what we can see here in Isla Sinaloa this is another painting made by Antonio Lopez Sainz now what I like about this one is that the colors 
are very vibrant. It doesn't feel like something is actually going on here. And what we have is that most of his work um, actually immortalizes the spirit of Mazatlan. Uh, and I, I think I do agree. It is very, very vibrant, the colors here. I think he's just representing stuff that's important to him from this city, maybe from his memories. Um, that's why we have a guy, you know, a baseball player, which is kind of a big deal here in Mazatlan. And also, you know, uh, the streets, <laughs> the girl touching the fish. Uh, the fish. And um, this is another piece which is made by an Australian artist. So we can we can now see some of the differences here. Like this one looks more like the ones on the previous room, um, where we can see colors more like relaxed. I will say like like not being as intense as the ones we're going to continue seeing here in this part. We have a sunny day, and this is a 1930 oil painting um, made from Benito Quinquela Martin, showing activity in the port of La Boca. This is from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Something that's curious that I can see here that's interesting is that it is a very colorful piece or painting. Um, we we cannot almost like it's hard to see hard black, you know, areas except maybe here and and some of the doors here but the rest of it even though it has a lot of what seems to be just you know smoke from house or maybe fab you know factories um but the the ones that are actually very dark are the human figures working around it so i'm not sure if that's you know trying to say something now this one is surely trying to say something. This was made by David Alfaro Siqueiros, Echo for a Scream. And he was a social realist painter, apparent, uh, you know, this is the description that we have here. I know he was a muralist, so most of his work is painted in murals. And I will say that he is rather intense uh, with what he depicts in his paintings. This is another one made by him and even though it doesn't have like this kind of surreal atmosphere, uh, you know, context, it still feels very intense. Right now we have that um, this is representing a loss of childhood. Now here we have uh, another Mexican painting. This was made by Diego Rivera. And what we can see here is that um, you know, I think uh, this is a historical figure, of course, uh, from the re from the Mexican Revolution. You will see him often with some other, uh, like people, indigenous people, or you know, workers that are fighting for the revolution. This one here is a Piwamos Valley. This is a. Uh, landscape made in 1953 by Gerardo Murillo or Dr. Atl. Um, something that I think it's interesting to point out is that this is a landscape made from an art Mexican artist and we have here another landscape made made by an Australian artist. Now I'm not sure if the times are around the same time in 1896 almost almost a hundred years of difference. But still, the colors that we have here in Mexico are must, like very, very vibrant and, you know, it feels almost unreal. Like, they are not trying to represent what they are seeing. I think this goes more by feeling of, you know, the whole area. It feels very welcoming, um, but there's an oddly, you know, darker sky here going on. This one, it's uh, the Shepherd David, an 1895 painting by painting made by Elizabeth Jane Gardner, depicting a young David kneeling victoriously on a dead lion. So I'm pretty sure this is not from Latin America. <laughs> not the name of the author or the theme seems to be related to what we've been seeing so far. I mean, I, I like it a lot. It, it looks very interesting. I guess it's also a biblical reference, but don't know the story as well. 
here we have a something I would have said that is cubism, but I don't know anything about art. Apparently, this is avant-garde, and it was made by Emilio Peturotti, uh, which is an Argentinian painter. This was made in 1924. Well, uh, well I guess it is made or it was uh, in an exhibition. 1924 in Buenos Aires and something that I find very interesting of this image is the colors and how it helps you to you know bring very um, to the top of will say uh, pieces of the painting like we have the face we have the suit looking very very vibrant but the same image like has some very dark tones that like help to bring out the vibrant color that's that's very interesting even though the figure by itself doesn't feel complicated but the manage you know the way he managed to color and make this very straight um, parts uh, I think are what looks more interesting to me all right and now here's this one this uh, self-portrait again we're seeing Piece, uh, paintings are not as old as the other ones. This was made in 1960 by Francisco Toledo. It's a surrealism style, of course, because I've never seen someone looking like this in my life. Um, there's this, of course, exaggerating fantastical forms, and there's some geometry in the in the painting. Now, I gotta say, this is something I don't really enjoy much. It feels like. Um, I don't know, like a disconnection to me. This is uh, named The Street, uh, made by Fernando Botero, a Colombian artist. Uh, something that I know of this guy is that he will represent or paint most of the times, if not always, round, like people with very round and voluptuous figures, as it says here. And, and it's interesting to see that when someone picks a theme or you know a trope that they just keep doing on over and over but that is actually what happened with this artist I guess now this one is made by Federico Kampf what we have here is that it's a self thought and I guess what I can get from this piece or painting is that it is kind of a merge between the traditional Mexican people or you know the modern rather than uh, traditional with the ancient where we have some depictions of, you know, the sculptures or the reliefs made in um, uh, by this culture, and it's mixed with this one that was clearly brought from Europe, uh, from Europe during the you know conquest. It's very very interesting to see the colors around it. I'm sure like this is charge with so much energy because it has a, a message and an intention from from the painter now we're going to see a series of paintings from Frida Kahlo we have that one of the girl wearing a mask this one here of a self-portrait with four monkeys and this one that's another self-portrait apparently but this one uh, a more surrealistic um, I guess tone or vibes to it um, I think I've said this before it is hard for me to relate to this art it feels very very rough in many you know parts like I guess the color is what's more interesting and possibly hard even you know for people to to replicate but in general, I, I don't like the figures that are represented in most of the Mexican paintings. Um, because, like like I said, they feel rough uh, to me. Now, this one it was made by a Chilean artist, Guillermo Lorca. And I do agree with this that says here. It is something that stays in your mind long after you've seen it. Because there, it is, it is very weird what's going on here. We have a green colored girl and a bunch of dogs so we have a very busy part or you know image um where it is very there's a lot of things going on at the bottom and then at the top we don't have much things going on rather than the painting or the colors but but you know i like the figures and i like the the technique here 
this was made in 2012, so it's very, very recent, just 10 years um, from today, I guess. This one here is uh, self-portrait, but this time from Jose Clemente Orozco. Um, I, I know this artist and some of his work. I visited a place that was painted with murals that he did, and there's one very important one that's uh, foreshortening painting with, uh, I think it's called something like Men in Flames or something like that will be uh, translated. And it is made on the top of a, you know, of the building, which has a form that I forgot how to, how to say, but it's kind of a round uh, end on the ceiling and it looks as if it's flat. So it's, it has a very interesting uh, illusion, I will say, optical illusion. And the colors here, again, are very vibrant, very, very strong, we can say, uh, but not, they don't look happy. Like there's always something going on, such force and aggressiveness to the paintings made here. Here we have a, I guess, uh, well, this one is made by Jose Agustin Arrieta. Painted, uh, this was painted in 1874, and this one is another Mexican painter known for scenes of everyday life. I can agree, like, this one looks more like the painter or the paintings that we see or that we, we saw before from Europe, where people is just depicting people from the era, and this looks like that. Now, in contrast, we have another very intense painting where, would, you know, what I like the most about this one is how it, it is um, like the red goes to yellow at some point and then it surrounds the image. And I think the color here is very, very interesting. I mean, of course, it looks very aggressive and vibrant. There's something going on here again with the theme of the conquest and Spain, you know, um people like regional or like the actual people from from here fighting against this force that ultimately won but there's some kind of uh rage i will say from from people here or at least that's what you can see from that type of images this was made by an Austrian symbolist painter, Gustav Klimt. And we have some, I guess the most interesting about this one is that it has a lot of texture, um, even with color functioning as one. Um, it, it is, it, you can kind of see here, these two figures. We have one that it, it's actually kneeling and the man seems to be like, just um, like, moving towards the the lady here kind of as if they were surrounded by by a robe or maybe just a big blanket at least that's what i'm getting it's it's very hard for me to interpret what we are seeing because you know i don't know much about art like in this way now this is another historical painting like we've seen biblical images or references and here in Mexico, I think we will also see a lot of this kind of things where this tree represents a place where supposedly Hernán Cortés went to shelter and wept after suffering a defeat against the Aztec army or the Mexicas. Um, maybe I'm just missing history as well. So let's just say, let's just read what it says here. The Mexican Aztec army. Um, this one looks very out of place, so let's see. Uh, this was made by an Australian artist, so again, I don't think that European artists, like, don't have the same energy to, you know, it's a different one. And, and maybe, like, I've seen paintings from France during the revolution that are very strong, but I feel that they have, they are charged with a very different vibe. like. It seems like they're looking towards the future, like, like, uh, like, like looking forward. And I think that most of the things that we have here has a very dense feeling of we're not forgetting of what happened before. 
and we're upset about it or you know we want to I don't know like we want to keep using that to fuel our inspiration at least that's what I get from most of the things that we're seeing here now this is another painting uh, about like some surrealist painter um, this one's made in 1942 and it's a an odd one again like I don't really know what's going on we have some trees or leaves covering the body and there's a red thing so that got to be some symbolism going on here but it's hard to interpret if you don't have the knowledge um, here's another very intense figure we can see here with the with the look in the eyes of the of the horse and the guy riding it like they've seen things We have here that Florencio Molina Campos, who made this is, or was a man, is or was, I'm not sure, a man who loved the country life and agricultural and left livestock activity. So he depicted a man of the provinces of Argentinian, oh, Argentina and this painting. This one also feels a little bit disconnected, so I'm pretty sure it's not from here. Uh, this was made in 1838 by a Hungarian artist, Miklos Barabas in the romanticism style. Um, this one is also Mexican, made by Miguel Covarrubias. And this was, actually it says here that it was painting in Bali, Indonesia in 1932. So it seems that this guy traveled a lot. And I gotta say that from all of the pictures or Mexican paintings that I've seen so far, this is the one I like the most. And don't take me wrong, I mean, it, it, it is showing some some skin, I, I guess we can say, but the face and the color, it is vibrant, but it looks pretty as well. And that's something, you know, maybe I'm biased because that's some kind of the type of art that I like. Um, so, so far I would say that this one here and this one here are my favorite. And I, I think they're like kind of polar opposites. Like one is really a very rela relaxed image and this one is very intense. But the colors are so vibrant that I think I like both of them. Now this one uh, feels very, I don't know, very basic. It is celebrating, I guess, role, okay, role of woman in creating these objects and assembling the aesthetic creations. I, I thought it was going to say celebrating some culture traditions. Um, but I guess, you know, it, it feels like just... Um, like steel life or something like that which I'm not a big fan of but there's another picture that's very intense again for another by another Mexican artist in this case Pedro Coronel um, see it says here that the use of colors take us back to the ancient cultures with primitivist synthesized forms um, it might be it feels kind of symmetrical um, but I'm, I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. Like this, they, this here looks like a forehead. Then we have eyes, maybe a beak. But what is that? Hmm. This is uh, made by another Argentinian painter, Prilidiano Puerredon. Puerredon. And this is Monelita Rosas in 1951. She was a political uh, perp I'm sorry, popular Argentine political activist. All right. We have now something made by Remedios Varo. So this painting shows a figure corresponding to Arcanum 9, the hermit, the hero who secludes himself to seek his inner life. Now, I'm not sure if this is a work of fiction or like based from a liter literature or a story maybe it's just something she creates before making the painting so she can base it on, on an actual image this is another one by the same artist and in this we see apparently some of common themes of this person like these ones are not as intense as the other ones but still feels like it is trying to evoke more things than just the body of the model that she's drawing here. So we have uh, a very interesting result.
Okay, now continuing with the vibrant colors, we have here this that's made from Brazilian artist Valdir Rivas. And it says here that they often use rich and harmonious colors. We, we can see that and I I can see I can see that. So it is very interesting also, I think one of my favorites so far. So you can see this from a distance and you get what it is. And it looks unique. This is another piece that looks a little bit unique, but I, I think in a different way. Like we're back with the aggressiveness of the of the forms and the color. Uh, this was made in 1979 by Roberto Mata from Chile and it seems to be like charged again with some symbolism that I don't get so it will be interesting to get it you know described by someone that actually knows what they're talking about this is made by Rufino Tamayo Mexican artist who assimilated the avant-garde from paintings he admired in New York including this one from 1928 so again, this seems to be charged with some symbolism. I don't think this is just like still life or slice of life kind of thing. Though we do have a foot that seems to be kind of an ornament or a trophy or something, a trophy. We have some cards going from one, two, and four. Then scissors, a cigarette, maybe a sharpener, and something going on outside. Could that be like a like a balloon or something is that outside of this just like the first time I, I saw this I thought that it could be like like the hallway from a, maybe a hotel or something but maybe it's like a balcony this is outside I don't know okay so this is another one made by Diego Rivera in 1941 and I think this was actually used in the public text uh, that the, you know you will get when you're studying here in public schools. Uh, I don't remember the, the actual book that it was on, but I think it was from the later grades. <laughs> okay, we have another one here that's interesting with the kid. You know, like we can see that there's some love going on here um, we have it, it is called motherhood after all and this was made by a Brazilian artist apparently the Tarsila do Amaral which is the mother of Brazilian modernism um, you know from all the figures that we've seen so far I think this one captures the human body very good it looks kind of stiff at some points but there's also some very good organic um, you know shapes I don't know like they kind of look all the same if you notice like not the same the same but like made very similarly this one I think was also in a book when I was in the school uh, this one is called The Offering and it is made by Saturnino Erran I think what I can see the most here are the simple sushi flowers used in the you know, offering as offerings in the day of the dead, right? So that makes sense. I always felt like they were in a boat. I don't know why, like maybe because it feels like this is an oar and this is like water, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Right, and finally, I remember um, having a class where they kind of explained this to me. I don't remember, I cannot remember, it, it, but it's very complicated what's going on. Like, it, of course, it is representation of the crucifixion uh, of Christ, but it seems to be going on on a polyhedron or, you know, part of a tesseract that, you know, I think it was representing like more dimensions than just three. D. And it's hard to grasp the idea of this. So of course it was made by Salvador Dalí, a very huge painter and sur um, also surrealist. But I wish to know and or remember everything that was shared to me during that class because I know it would have been cool to, to have something more to say. But uh, that'll be it. I mean, it was a long run of you know, things we saw at the museum. 
Um, I hope that, you know, when you visit this place, take some time to read the, the name of the, pla of the paintings and maybe look for some more if there's something you like. Maybe you discover an artist that you never heard before and now you'll be able to get more, uh, you know, you, like luckily we do have the internet right now where we can find more about stuff that we like. So I think this is a very good opportunity for you to find that. You know, always interesting to uh, learn more about art. So I hope that you you actually get that from from the museum in Isla Sinaloa. But uh, I think that's going to be it for the video. Hopefully, next ones I'll be going through some other areas, some other places or buildings with the full um, collection displayed, and we're going to review every single one of the items that you can find there. Uh, I'm sure I'll be able to say more stuff on that um, or at least maybe more accurate so I'm looking forward to also going through one of those videos um, where we can explore buildings in Isla Sinaloa but that's going to be it for this one I hope you had a good time and I'll see you in another one but until then goodbye